In this tutorial, we will be discussing the uses of nuclear chemistry. There are several uses, such as energy, geological and archaeological dating, weaponry, smoke detectors, medical, food preservation, and security for detecting explosives. We're going to begin our discussion by looking at different dating of rocks and bones. Mineral geology compares the amount of uranium-238 to the amount of lead-206. Or they can compare the amounts of potassium-40 to argon-40. Archaeologically speaking, if we're looking at the difference between something that's dead and something that's alive, ancient, we can compare carbon-14, known as carbon dating. Carbon-14 has a radioactive half-life of 5,730 years. So we can compare the amount of carbon-14 to something that's really old, something that's ancient, to something that is alive right now by looking at how much carbon is left. If it's pretty much the same, if it's 100%, the object's considered to be zero years. However, if it gets to the point where there's only 10% of carbon-14 left in comparison to something that's living, it's considered 19,000 years old. So they're able to take something, take a sample of something that's really, really ancient and compare it to something that's living right now and see how much of it has gone away, how much of it has um, broken down. They do this through the half-life equations. So here's an example problem. Determine the age of ancient skull given the following information. The ancient skull is 4.5 disintegrations per minute per gram of carbon-14 while a living organism is 15.3. If the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,370, what's the age? So, first thing you have to realize is radioactive isotopes have a half-life that is first-order kinetics. So this is a first-order kinetics problem. That means that we can figure out what the rate order is, the rate constant, by solving for k. We know that it's 5,370, so we're going to put that into the T and rearrange the equation to solve for K, which comes out to be 1.209 times 10 to the negative 4 years per year. From here, we can use the first order integrated rate law to determine the exact time. So now we're looking for the time of how old it is. We know K, and we also know how many disintegrations there are. We can compare the two samples. So 4.5 divided by 15.3 is equal to negative, from this negative right here, 1.209 times 10 to the negative 4 times the time. So let's start rearranging this equation. 4.5 divided by 15.3 comes out to 0 0.294. Take the natural log of that and it comes out to be negative 1.224. Divide both sides by negative 1.209 times 10 to the negative 4, and that gives us a time of 1.01 times 10 to the fourth years. This is the age of the ancient skull. Now we're going to turn our attention to nuclear power. The fissionable material is stored in long tubes called fuel rods. These, this is where the reaction is occurring. Between the fuel rods are control rods. These are made of neutron absorbing materials such as boron or cadmium. The neutrons needed to sustain the chain reaction are then absorbed by these so that way the reaction doesn't get out of control. The rods are placed in a material to slow, the, to slow down the ejected neutrons called a moderator. This allows the chain reaction to occur below the critical mass. And here's a picture of a nuclear power plant right here. This is where this is all occurring. For medical uses, we have discovered more and more ways to utilize radioisotopes. 
First thing we want to do is look at the tissue or organ to be targeted. The size and the thick or the thickness of the organ plays a big role in which one we choose. The more penetrating the ionization energy, the greater the effect. So if it's something that's very soft, very thin, we don't want to use something too powerful. We don't want to destroy the tissue altogether. We want to choose a radionuclide that is specific for that tissue. The half-life length for medical uses is far different than the ones that we choose for minerals. We don't want to inject something into somebody's body that's going to be there for thousands of years. If we look at the ones that we use for medical purposes, we're looking at things that are days old, hours old. For instance, iodine is used for the thyroid. It's only 8.1 days for a half-life. Strontium is used for bones. It's 2.8 hours. So the difference between years and hours is the big difference between the medical uses and the geological dating uses. Radioactive sources can be implanted into the body to internally treat cancerous areas and or visually in inspect internal organs. Unlike x-rays, nuclear imagery allows both bone and soft tissue to be imaged very clearly. So you can see the bones here with the x-rays, but once we inject it with the nuclear, we can also see some of the softer tissues. If we inserted a radioisotope, it could cause little harm to the body as they are removed from the patient after treatment. If we've implanted radioisotopes, it's, if seeds are implanted into the patient, they will decay to harmless levels after the time of radiation has been reached. Remember, these are very short half-lives, so they don't stick around very long. Ionizing radiation can break molecular bonds and or form, form radicals. The molecules are ions that have had an electron knocked out. So in other words, there's a free electron on the, the, on the atom. It's not all paired up. It can damage biological molecules and cause malfunction of the cell. So there are negative effects to this. High levels of radiation over a short period of time can kill large numbers of cells and can cause the immune system to weaken. A decrease, it could also decrease the cell's ability to absorb nutrients from food. May cause, this may result in death, usually from an infection. Low doses of radiation over a period of time show an increased risk of development of cancer. Radiation damages DNA that can be that cannot get repaired properly. Low doses over time may damage reproductive organs as well, which may end in infertility. And it could damage the reproductive cells that may lead to genetic defects in offspring. So there are positives and there are negatives. There's trade-offs and it all depends on the risks and being able to weigh them. The amount of danger to humans of radiation is measured in the unit of rims. Between 20 and 100, the de there's a decrease in the white blood cell count, which a possible ri increased cancer risk. Between 100 and 400, radiation sickness increased cancer risk. And 500 and more is potential of death. And those are some of the pros and cons of using radioisotopes.